10 reasons why you can't finish your portfolio projects. First of all, welcome back to another YouTube video on my YouTube channel. My name is Anosh. I'm a professional concept artist. I work in the movie and game industry over the last seven years. And today we talk about 10 reasons why you maybe not finish your portfolio project. This is my mentee Franciscus. When he joined the mentorship program, he had one big problem that he couldn't finish his projects. And now he's pumping out projects after project after project. So here are 10 reasons why you maybe cannot finish your portfolio projects. Number one, lack of clear goals and directions. Failing to define specific goals for portfolio projects can lead to confusion. Uncertainty about where to focus on either concept art, character design, environment design, or landscape drawing can hinder your progress. The big problem can be that you either don't think too much about the idea or you think too much about the idea. Does that confuse you? Let me help you. So a good solution could be that you start simple. Write down your base idea and then maybe talk with people around you about that idea and what they think about it. Does your idea has a proper problem to solve with design or visual? If so, then it could be the right direction. Also, creating mood boards can help to pre-visualize your design and idea direction. Number two, you scope too big or you have too ambitious goals. So what I like to call overscoping. I have seen this in many, many cases that students have these super ambitious goals. They want to create gigantic worlds. They want to design characters. They want to design environments. They want to do props. They want to do the creatures. They want to do the full work. At this point, we also need to dissect what is actually doable. So we have to know how to deal with our creative energy over time because the flow of creative energy is not there the whole project. So how can we solve this? It is always good to write everything down. So if you think about creatures and if you think about characters and if you think about the environment, that's great. Write it down. Write everything down that kind of inspires the idea and kind of help to develop that idea. I want to give you an example. Francisco, for example, he had the idea of where aliens kind of like enforced architecture and technology and he wanted to do this crazy, crazy idea but it was just too much and he did not really know where to start with this. So I kind of like pushed him down to just start with a simple hammer design for the forge because he was constantly talking about the forge. And from the forge, we moved over to the anvil and from the anvil, we moved over the mechanism and from the mechanism to the forge. And for the forge, we also had to give context. So we also designed the environment. So that can be a possibility for you. But of course, this can also work with characters or just props. What is the most important thing here that you always keep in mind to put things in perspective, to give context to your story, because story is key. Number three, striving for perfection can cause constant revisions and slow the progress. Usually artists may never feel their work is good enough to include in their portfolio. But the problem is here more of a, you compare yourself maybe a bit too much. It can be very, very dangerous for your own growth and for your own development of your project if you constantly go on ArtStation, look at other projects, which could basically slow you down in your own design process. If it's for inspiration or if it's to figure out well, how did that person solve a similar problem, then that can be good. But if it's slowing and compressing your creative flow, then you should try to avoid this. Number four, lack of time management. Good time management skills can result in procrastination or missed deadlines. Balancing a day job or other responsibilities plus your portfolio work can be very, very challenging. Before you start your project that you write down how much time you give yourself to work on that project. I'm not only talking about start to finish, so let's say you give yourself six months to work on one single project, you should also keep in mind what comes in the weeks in between. So maybe you go on vacation or maybe you have certain work things you have to do. Maybe you have other responsibilities you have to take care of. We have to consider this realistically. It doesn't make sense to say I can work on this every week for 60 hours and I can straight work six months every week 60 hours that doesn't work because we are not machines definitely very very crucial that you plan your time realistically and it, it sometimes helps if you just write down a general estimate for your project number five technical skill gaps or how i like to say your x is not sharp enough insufficient mastery of necessary software or techniques can hinder your progress an artist may can get stuck trying to learn tools rather than producing portfolio worthy work. A great example I always try to use also for my students is every time 
we work on our fundamental skills to sharpen our X. And every time we work on fundamentals, we sharpen the X. Every time we produce a final product, every time we work on something that we want to present, we're chopping wood. And maybe your X is not sharp enough for the wood you want to chop. So in other words, maybe your skills are not there for the things you might try to achieve. So in order to figure that out, it's always good to second guess, are my skills there yet? Or is what I try to achieve actually too big for my actual skill level right now? If that's the case, I can always advise to either take some courses, do specific practice intensive weeks where you focus on these things in order to get there. Or of course, my number one tip is always to get a mentor or someone who's kind of like one-on-one -on -one teaching you and helping you to get there because the person can push the right buttons and maybe know what is your actual problem. Number six, difficulty in generating ideas. Struggling to come up with creative original concepts can stall a project. Idea generation is a crucial aspect of concept art or character design or whatever you try to achieve. A very fun story I always think about is when I heard that Eminem had his best ideas on the toilet. Why? Because he's maybe most relaxed when he's on the toilet. Maybe he is the most creative. Maybe he has a habit mechanism. Interesting part is that it's his safe area, his safe zone. You put yourself in a state, in a mechanism or in a routine that helps you to be creative, to come up with cool ideas. Sometimes that can be if you just take a walk and you see something in nature that could inspire you for your project. Sometimes it can be you just at home, you read something about an interesting fact of an animal or something that is visually interesting for you, which you saw in a museum. So these things can inspire and generate new ideas for a new project or help to develop the current project. My advice, always take a little notebook with you where you are able to write down these ideas because these thoughts, they come very fast but they can also go very fast. Number seven, inadequate reference gathering. Neglecting to gather reference materials can lead to inaccuracy or incomplete designs. Often proper references are essential for realistic environment and character design. Everything that we have seen today, which is stylized, is often based on something realistic. But in order to achieve the realism, we have to look what actually looks real. Never forget, it's always about communication. Whatever we try to communicate is our goal. And for this, we maybe need references. Maybe your idea is a spin-off of a certain historic time area. So my little tip here is also look at different entertainment IPs. What did your favorite game did good that you really liked design-wise? What did your favorite movie did very well? Where did the inspiration come from? Because everything has its origin. So there is always a point of inspiration Number eight, lack of feedback or critics. Isolation from peers or mentors can result in stagnation. Constructive feedback is vital for improvement and general motivation of your project or of you. Of course, not every feedback can be super valuable. Maybe you have a friend or a family member you can ask for objective feedback. So I often see that people start to design tools or weapons. They think that you should understand what they actually try to say, but it's not really understandable because the design actually became a abstract object versus something that is actually understandable. So if I design a hammer, then it should look like a hammer, even if it's a hammer from a fantasy timeline or if it's a sci-fi hammer. It should look like a hammer, so I understand it. So a good tip here is just to ask people in your life which are maybe not so artistic. Because if a common person understand what you drew or what you designed or what you painted, then this feedback can maybe be very valuable for your project. By the way, while we talk about feedback, we are actually currently looking at the most recent project of Francisco's. He asked me for feedback, so I basically go over every single piece in his portfolio and try to give him the most valuable feedback here. Number nine, unrealistic expectations. So we kind of like talked about the overscoping part. There's also this expecting rapid results or intermediate job offers that can lead to disappointment. Industry in general is highly competitive and success often requires patience and perseverance. I want to say it again, it requires patience and perseverance. That doesn't mean that if you do one portfolio piece or one good painting that you get a job. And this is often misunderstood. When someone looks at your portfolio, they want to see quality consistency. 
we want to show that our axe is very sharp and we can chop the right wood in the right way. But we also want to show that every time we chop it, we do it in the same quality. What we try to do, we always try to show the best quality in our project. Whenever you construct your project or whatever you want to present at the end, always look for the highest state of quality. You don't need to put everything in that portfolio project. And what's really important is the progress of your thinking. Because later, if you go to a job, you probably have a lead person, an art director, who takes over the decision making on what is the design direction. But you have to show that you can start to develop an idea and finish this idea. Even if you're an illustrator and you paint a beautiful painting, show the progress, show the research, show how you got to the idea. Because this is really what people want to see. This is what really is important. Also to the point of perseverance and consistency, back to Franciscus, he joined the program and it took him roughly a year to get to the really good quality of getting an internship or becoming a junior. Now he got to the quality, all he cares about is pumping out project after project until someone sees, okay, this guy is actually really good and can reproduce the quality he's actually shown. Number 10, loss of motivation. Burnout, frustration or personal issues can kind of like sap your motivation. And when I mean sap, they basically close it down. Maintaining enthusiasm and dedication over a long term can be very, very challenging. This is also the reason why you should try to self-reflect a little bit and understand yourself and how your own creative energy flow works because it's not the same for everyone. You may be realized when you're in the beginning of the project, your creative energy is very, very high. And then you start to do all the work and you put all this in, you realize, well, the next day and the day after and the day after and the day after, your creative energy got less and less and less. And maybe after five days, you can't see the project anymore. So what can we actually do there? Basically two options, take a very little pause. So we need to gather more creative energy. So something that is not has to do with art. This is one of the biggest problems also I see is people start new projects then and they, tr they think they need to do something new. But what they do, they spend more creative energy. So this is not the right way to do it. A good way is maybe to do something that balance you. So going to the gym, meet some friends, read book, watch a movie, kind of like go out and everything that gives you creative energy back is the right thing to do there. Eventually you have to have discipline to come back to continue to work on your project. Remember, we want to make a timeline, a deadline, a goal, and we try to hit these goals. The other option would be we are just biting the bullet and we are very sturdy and disciplined and we fight through. That can work for some people. When you become a professional, and I learned this myself, the more you work as a professional and imagining you coming from doing art a little bit every day to a full-time job where you maybe do 40 to 50 hours per week. You basically do art all the time. So it's kind of like the ultimate training of becoming an artist. You kind of like work on your own endurance of being creative. And you have no choice when you come to work and someone requires, well, you have to make designs now. You have to be fast. You have to think. You have to know your techniques, your mechanism, and where to flow your own creative energy and where to lead it and guide it and channel it. What makes me creative? Where do I become more creative? What is the day today? What did I did yesterday? Did playing tennis with my friends gave me today a lot of enthusiasm and creative energy because today I want to draw. So in conclusion, finishing a portfolio project in the game or movie industry involves a combination of clear planning, time management, technical proficiency, creativity, and definitely resilience. And I hope that this video helps you a little bit to achieve this. Please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe. I wish you a wonderful day. Good luck with your dream careers, with your portfolios and see you next time. Ciao, ciao.